Hey everyone, Caleb here to bring you a tutorial on how to use the Flutterbricks extension beta version 0.1.9. Let's get started. All right, here I am in VS Code. The first thing I'm gonna show you how to do is how to download Flutterbricks, which by the way is super simple. It's as easy as going to the left in the extensions tab, typing in Flutterbricks in the search bar and hitting install. It's really that easy. Now, you can access Flutterbricks through the Flutterbricks icon in your sidebar on the left. I've taken the liberty of creating a quick starter project to demonstrate how Flutterbricks works. And I'm going to scroll down to find a widget that I'd like to use in my Flutter project. I'm going to go down here, click this button, and I like this top gradient button. Now you'll see that there are two options copy code and save. Copy code is the simplest, so we'll go over that first, but we'll be explaining what save does just a little later. Now there are three possible copy formats when copying code in Flutterbricks. They each have different purposes, and I'll explain exactly what situations you want to use each. The first is copy inline. When I click copy inline, I'm going to get the inline code in my clipboard, and I can paste that wherever I like with Control-V. I'm going to put it as the body parameter in my scaffold. And you can see here, it's still in my clipboard. I can put it wherever I want. But I'm going to get rid of that code I copied to the bottom, and I'm just going to keep it as the body parameter of my scaffold. Okay, reload. Oh, and it looks like I have an extra semicolon that I need to get rid of. Oops. Super simple to solve. And voila, there's my button. I think I'm going to center that as well, so I'm just going to wrap that widget. That, that outer decorated box in a center widget. And voila, here we are. We have a centered button. Now, as you can see, the code that was copied is just a simple collection of material widgets. But as you know with Flutter, we want to break down our widget tree into small pieces for the sake of performance and so we can build reusable widgets that we can use in different places. That's where the copy widget and copy call functionality come in. Now I'm going to revert back to the way the file was before so I can show you how this works. So now we're going to hit copy widget. This copied the class gradient fb1 into my clipboard, which I just copied to the bottom of the file. Now gradient fb1 actually has the exact same code that we had before but it's pulled into this class so we can reuse it and it's more performant. But this is only the declaration of the widget that we've created. We also need to call it somewhere in our main widget tree so it will display on the screen. And that is where the widget call comes in. I can hit copy call here and then use control V, control v to place it wherever I'd like. In this case, where I placed the widget before as the body parameter of the scaffold class. And voila, there it is, just again, like before. We're going to wrap it in a center, and there we go. It's almost exactly the same as what we had before, but now that we've pulled it into its own component, we can customize it and reuse this component across our entire project and even other projects. It's also more performant. But what if you want to use this widget somewhere else in your project? In this case, you want to take the widget and declare it in its own file so you can access it wherever you need. And that's why we created the save widget feature. With the save widget feature, you can automatically create a file for the widgets on Flutterbricks, and you can customize them to fit your project's needs. So I reverted the project the way it was before, and now I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to hit the save button instead of the copy code button, and it's going to bring up this pop-up. And this pop-up is just asking us to create a bricks directory which is where we store Flutterbricks widgets inside this specific project. Now this coordinates with the Flutterbricks widget manager. If you don't know what that is already, I'm going to send you to a blog post in the description. Now I'm going to save this to a pack, which is essentially just a subfolder of the Bricks directory. I'm going to pick Flutterbricks demo, click it, hit save, and voila. I've actually automatically saved a file with the widget into my project. Now, I could go view it, but instead, I'm going to copy the call to show you why this is so convenient. Now, instead of having to copy the code into my file, I can just place it wherever I like, 
and then use the light bulb on the left to import it. And there we go. My gradient button is imported, and if I hit Control S, it's going to show up where I want it. I can wrap this one in the center as well. Hit Control S again, and we have our button where we want it in the center of our screen. Now, as your project progresses, you're probably going to want to make customizations to this widget. And the good thing is, this is now yours, and you can edit it accordingly. If I go to the Edit button, I'm going to be taken to the Flutterbricks widget manager, where I can not only edit the code, but I can change the name, the screenshot, and the widget call to customize it to my own needs. And so I can access it not only in this project, but in all my projects. In this case, what I'm going to do is change the color of one of the gradients to pink. And once I hit Update Brick, this change is going to be inside the Flutterbricks widget manager, meaning I have a single source of truth for this widget in all my projects. And if I forget how to call this widget, which I often do. I can easily go back to the My Widgets tab in the top right, find it, and then copy the call, making it really easy to use them wherever I need. Now I'm just going to do a quick demonstration of this. I've actually created a new file called Second Page. Now let's say I want to use this widget somewhere else in my project. Well, it's really easy for me to access it. I can just go up to My Widgets, head down to the Flutterbricks demo pack that I put it in, hit copy code just like I would on a marketplace widget, copy call, and boom. All I have to do is import it like I did before, and there we go. I have the widget where I want it. Now this is on the second page, so I'm going to have to navigate to it. Of course, after I put it in a center. And there we are. That widget is now being called on the second page. Now, that's all for now. To summarize, in this tutorial I covered how to copy widget and inline code from Flutterbricks, how to save code into Flutterbricks automatically using the save feature, and how to access that code again through the Flutterbricks widget manager. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe, and throw any questions or feedback you have down in the comment section. We're working on this every single day, and we want to add the features that will help you most.